We'll start with our first presentation, Engaging Frontline Employees with IT Strategy. Our presenter is Kent Mogler. Kent grew up on a livestock and crop production farm in Northwest Iowa. He's a 1981 ISU alumni with a degree in economics and ag business. Major part of his career was at General Mills and at quite a number of organizations, including logistics, information, technology, international, and research development. Uh, though his favorite was North American manufacturing and supply chain, where he spent about a third of his 26 year career. The processing company, um, Excuse me. The, entre uh, the entrepreneurship of his farming background never left him, and in 2007, he joined a small meat processing company as a COO. Since 2015, Kent has directed much of his time and talents toward financial and systems improvement within production agriculture. His passion is to enable frontline employees in production agriculture to experience the same success as he experienced at General Mills. Currently, Kent is focused on fully implementing ERP systems approach on a multi-enterprise production agriculture. His team leverages a standard ERP system, but is customizing the front-end data acquisition and back-end reporting, with the primary focus being empowering frontline employees and allowing them to see their success every day with meaningful scoreboards. Along with enjoying time with his fam family and faith community, Kent serves as a board uh, uh, on the board of the Deaf School in Jamaica. He's a mentor to their senior accountant and admin team, and he's working on learning Jamaican Sign Language to communicate with students and staff as their first language. Let's join me in welcoming Kent as we turn the mic over to him. So uh, Dr. Ross this morning talked about perspective and uh, you know, learning perspectives today different and, and hopefully uh, my objective here is to help you guys, to, for all of us to think about our perspective around data and systems and how that can engage in, uh, uh, again, frontline employees. My passion is obviously the frontline. I have agenda just for Four items on my agenda. First, I want to encourage everyone here, you can do this. I don't care if you're with one of the big kind of firms or, you know, again, helping out small, small farms. You can do this. And it really requires three things. You have to have, you know, focus. Hopefully I can share more on that. Um, it is a journey. And last, know your data. And if you can get those three things in order, you can do this. I think the reason, um, oh, a couple things that, have impacted me. The first is this book. The, uh, I highly recommend um, Four Disciplines of Execution. You can talk a lot about strategy, purpose, core values, all that stuff. As you look at companies that perform exceedingly well time and time again, I'll use Apple as an example of that, there's others, but their execution is what sets them apart probably more than anything else. And the four disciplines is focus, leverage, engagement and accountability. And when you, the first one of focus is, does everybody know what the goal is? And within the pig industry, I'd say we're pretty good at that. Everybody knows kind of your goal, whether you're at South Farm, it's your, you know, PSY. Um, there's, if you're a grow finish, percent marketed. Um, so that, but knowing that everybody's pulling the same goal. The discipline of leverage. It's about having lead indicator KPIs, and I'll touch on that. We have a lot of KPIs. Pork industry does very well at identifying lots of KPIs, but they're lag indicators. They're always after the fact, I can see what my KPI is. The question is, what's your lead indicators? The third is a discipline of engagement, and that is about having a compelling scoreboard. And I always say, imagine trying to coach your basketball team, and there's no scoreboard in the gym. How long are those kids going to show up and really give you a full game? There's never a scoreboard. And, and so I go to a lot of farms. I've worked in manufacturing, go to a lot of manufacturing plants. If there's not visual indication of how the performance is going, you're leaving a lot of performance opportunity 
um, available to you. And the last is a discipline of accountability, again, uh, that everybody's committed. Second one, it would be uh, Simon Sinek. If I, I think Simon does a great job of talking about how the brain works, and he doesn't put people in classes of millennials or Zoomers or et cetera, or, or culture. So again, and his sort of bottom line is job fulfillment's a right, it's not a privilege. And so I believe, again, job fulfillment should be at the front line, um, not just in leadership roles. And last is trusted leaders. Um, Lencioni, Patrick Lencioni, um, another writer in this area is David Horsager. And David would say that trust is your biggest loss opportunity. You spend, you, you're kind of, if you, where you have a lack of trust, you're losing lots of money, and that book will, will tra uh, sh give you things to think about. So again, those three books have had a lot of impact on how I think about the application of systems within an organization. Um, whoops, I just went off. So one of the reasons um, I think I was invited, people have come to Pig Hill, Northwest Iowa, um, to our sow farm, and there's electronic scoreboards up there. And um, they're there all the time, they're just on. And the employees, there's no office staff that does any records at the sow farm. All of the information of that sow farm is updated as a part of the work process of the employees. Uh, not, nothing gets carried to the, I'll say to the office or sent off, not even to print sow cards. So it's all done there. It's organized for, um, for the staff in the front line. And so obviously this is breeding. This is, again, right, this is the gestation. This group is farrowing, and then they're you know, back. This is the week we're breeding. The, uh, what percent, right, we're targeting to get to a feral rate, so you can see how many are still pregnant, and the green is the gilt. This board was built by the frontline people when we, we started, we put something out there, but they shared with us you know, kind of what was important to them. You guys probably recognize a lot of these metrics. There's two on here that are lead indicators. Everything else is lag, right? And there's two leads on here. First one is what, they refer to as the Davo meter, which is really a feed intake of gilts in training and electronic sow feeding. Because if gilts fall off of feed going into, in that training process, obviously that takes them off cycle for being ready to be a good gilt to bring into. So tracking feed intake, and then the other one is observed heats. Again, what, to have a good breed week, do I have enough gilts that are going to give me a good baseline to keep my herd productive? If those two things work, everything else in breeding works. One of those fall off, you'll start to. So those are the lead indicators that if they work, the rest of breeding um, will happen in a, in a good fashion. Here's a farrowing whiteboard. The farrowing whiteboard, again, you recognize live born, et cetera, across the top, those. Daily, this is obviously the last seven days, cumulative, a target of where it would be, so the goal, and then quarterly, where we've come from. I see a lot of scoreboards, there's no context, like where did we come from, where are we at, where should we be going? And so we're laying out here over a years of, hi a one year worth of history, but showing specifically day by day. There's two lead indicators on this scoreboard also. One was not there for probably the first year of operation, and that's split suckle. And we all know that sort of, right, first 24 hour piglet's life sets her up for life, you know, that, that pig up for life. But we weren't tracking, you know, and not saying this is the only way or the best way, but split suckle is a part of making, trying to get that first 24 hours. The other lead indicator is how is back end farrowing doing? And so these here dials show, again, we, the farrowing of 
how the back end farrowing is, they're performing the tasks that they're to perform on sow care, piglet care, feed, um, et cetera. And the biosecurity person goes through once a week, get, um, audits their practices to make sure they're in compliance. And again, it's something that employees do, but they don't get much credit for. But we know that if they do that, and they're, they're doing a great job of taking care of those pigs from day one all the way to the end, you're gonna have a good performance. So we measure that and we put it up in, in front of them. And again, you can see by room, their, their names are there, and they can see their mortalities and how many piglets they have per sow, et cetera. So, so they see themselves against the others. Um, and again, this, and they do nothing to update this other than their work. I mean, the scoreboard just, you know, it, it publishes. Um, on those systems, we're drawing obviously from our pig system, one of the pig systems that we all use, right? Metafarms, pig nose, pig champ, one of those. Um, but it's also drawing from feed and it's also drawing from our ERP. So we couldn't put that scoreboard together from one system. We had to integrate and grab data from other systems to put a complete scoreboard together. So you can do that. Um, the first is focus, and the focus really is, you know, I would say is lead indicators to accelerate better decisions. Um, if there's something that I, uh, you know, that's a challenge for, for myself and for developing this, it is identifying the lead indicators, figuring out how to capture the lead indicators, and then in a, in a meaningful real-time basis to present that lead indicator back to the employees. If you read the book and believe in it, in 4DX, if you believe in that, the lead indicators give you the leverage. We're a lag indicator, right? What happens when you're a manager and you got lag indicators? Well, why, why didn't we have that? Why, right? You're, we're asking the why back here versus getting them focused on, hey, if you do these things, we'll have a good outcome. And so we're measuring the lead indicator of doing these things and the outcome will, will happen. It's, it's, it's a challenge, but uh, one worth uh, putting effort against. Second part of the journey is you need a vision. You know, kind of what is your technology vision? Um, Beckard and Harris would say kind of this formula, um, which says you need to have dissatisfaction with where you're at, you need to have a vision for where you're going, and you need to take first steps towards the vision and that has to all be greater to overcome the inertia of, hey, it's okay today. You know, the status quo, right? There is an inertia of status quo. And so you need to think about from within your own company, is there a dissatisfaction or not, right? And so if there's not a lot of dissatisfaction, you know, it's, it's probably not worth beginning the journey, right? Or there's dissatisfaction, but there's not a vision, and there's not agreement on a vision, right? So there's a lot of, the, and then obviously you need to take first steps. You can have great vision, vision without action, that's called a dream. I never got too much accomplished just dreaming, right? So you, we all need to get going on first steps. So what are some technology vision considerations? Cloud or no cloud, right? I mean, you gotta decide whether you're gonna be a cloud kind of company or no cloud, and, Again, and the dynamics of technology change quickly. Um, I would, my own personal opinion of that has changed some. Again, I felt for quite a while the cloud, development of cloud technology was not there to support where we needed to be with systems. And again, I was probably biased by that from my uh, General Mills experience um, because everything was kind of internal. Obviously with Cybersecurity, et cetera, there's a lot better security if you're in the cloud than if you're on your home base. Um, I, I believe that anyway. Um, so there's consideration there. But other parts of uh, consideration. One is, do you want best in class software? I mean, are you as a company looking for best in class software? I want the, we gotta have the best feed system. We're gonna have the best uh, hog performance system. We're going to have the best, and, and you name it. You know, that's what you want. You will have best in class. Um, and, and that's a strategy. And if you go to World Product Expo, there'll be kind of all kinds of people who talk to you about their best in class software. Um, 
You could have a strategy of, of saying we're going to do everything on that. Um, as said, I, I believe a bit in this ERP solution because it's one that I experienced at General Mills and I've seen at other places. And I believe, again, if you go in the ERP strategy, you will not have best in class. There will always be a better system than the ERP system. But the ERP system is, is an integrated system across all things. And so how I order meds or how I purchase pigs or how I purchase feed ingredients, et cetera, et cetera, will be all the same if you're in an ERP system. And so there's a lot of, there may be leverage across your enterprise of doing that. Um, come from crop and hogs, crops are just like pigs. It's a, it's a project management process, right? It's a job. It's like we start these pigs, we do this, and it, the calendar doesn't matter. Crops kind of falls on a calendar, but it's, a, it's an event or job costing, if you will, is what it is. So we treat crops just like we treat group of pigs um, from obviously different bio, uh, you know, your biology measures of what you're measuring is different, but the processes are all the same. The next thing you need to consider is how to connect that data and what, what technologies you're going to use to connect it, right? And so there's data warehouse strategies, and obviously there's Microsoft. There's all kinds of companies that want to sell you about their data warehouse. Um, more recently, there's technologies that will say we're a data lake. A data warehouse tended to be data only. Data lake allows you to save images, documents, as well as data and integrate it together. So you got to make that decision. Am I choosing a platform that's only going to be focused on data, or will it also take other videos, et cetera, et cetera? So um, that's another consideration. And at the end of the day, you just want to get information out. Right? There's so many frustrations out there of, and not just an egg, of feeding the beast, right? You put a lot of effort of putting stuff into systems, but trying to pull it out um, can be where the challenge is, is how do you pull it out, et cetera. And again, so your vision of technology needs to kind of think through all of those, and you need, kind of, again, a vendor or someone within your own organization that can help you think through those steps. And again, I would just say farmers, um, this is no different than your corn planter. You know, I haven't seen too many farmers who are not willing to attack their corn planter and add this and change this and kind of right do that. They get to an IT system and they go, I don't know what to do. But that's okay. But find someone who does because it's just like a corn planter. You can tweak it and move it, etc. If you're working with the right vendors, right? Some vendors are like, you know, you're not going to, you know, your software. And, and there's reasons not to go down that way. But I'd say don't be afraid of your IT systems if you're not afraid of your corn planter. And the last thing I'd say is you got to know your data. And again, here's another area that I think a lot of people think is easy, um, probably don't give enough attention to. So know the volume of data. What volume of data are you talking about? This is the sow farm. It's one sow farm, 4,500 sows, right? 60,000 event transactions a quarter. That's what we're dealing with, 60,000, right? Since we started that sow farm, there is over a million and a half event transactions that we can look back, manage, know how to look at. So what level of volume, you know, and obviously you need to put in place then, processes to measure it. What's the latency time on your data? What's, so when we started the sow farm, we had latency of 10 days, went to eight days, went to four and a half days, went to two days. I would tell you that at those latencies, a scoreboard doesn't matter to the frontline employees. You're on day three or four, I don't know what happened four days ago. right? So you need to, get, you need to think about latency if you're looking for frontline employees. Latency of same day, maybe one day. May, you know, one day. Um, again, depends on. But you got to know your latency. And then what's your error rate? What's your error rate on your data? Right? That's good. So 
we have I express error rate in errors per thousand. So we started out at 95, you know, in this range, set a goal of five. We're, you know, running, this farm's running around 20, you know, 15 to 25. That's a 98% accuracy, right? Five is a 99.5% accurate. If I go to employees and say, we gotta get to 99.5, they're going nah, I'll never get there. Put it in this form and don't tell them it's, a, I mean, we can get to that, um, that accuracy rate. But where are you today? Again, on your journey and, and knowing your data. And if you think like knowing that's enough, no, you kind of needed to know it by event. And so this is, since this, the pigs, you recognize these events. So at this farm, moves, move events are 25% of the volume, followed by treatment events, followed by mating events. I've got over 50% of my events in just those three transactions, right? And then they kind of normal distribute and then low volume. We know the lag time by events, the latency time by event. How fast are we getting those events recorded? And then the error by events. Why do I want to know these things? Because where my latency is, that's where my, it's not the employee's problem, that's my problem. There's a bad process there. How can we do better? How can we help them? Something isn't working for them very well. As, as well as on the, the error rate, it, it identifies the opportunity space. You can do this. The vision does not need to be complicated. The hardest part, I would say, are two, the two things. Focus, what are my lead indicators? How do I capture lead indicators? How do I get them in front of employees? Create a compelling scoreboard. Don't go on a journey and have a scoreboard that, there's plenty of scoreboards that work for the vet, the farm manager, et cetera. Looking at scoreboards that work for frontline employees so that every day when they go out to breed, every day when they walk into that farrowing room, they know exactly where their priorities and how to perform well, and that when they do that, it's also recognized on the scoreboard. They see themselves in the scoreboard. It's not management scoreboard, it's their scoreboard. And, you know, again, is knowing your data. Uh, it takes time to kind of find that out. I hope I'm not out of place to say it. I mean, I was at Meta Farms. Meta Farms, I, I live 20 miles from Meta Farms headquarters. And, you know, I think if you guys use Meta Farms, you should ask them these questions. What's that? What are your best companies doing for latency? What's your best company is doing for error rates? Don't be afraid to ask them those questions, you know? And where are we at if you're using their software? Where are we at? Because you need to be in these performance areas to get to a scoreboard that's meaningful uh, for your employees and gives you focus on where to put your attention to enable um, the advantages of it at the sow farm uh, here and we're working grow finish is when one employee is off and the next one comes in, they know everything's in place for them. They're not going through piles of paper looking for this. They're not worried about being off for three days on breeding and coming back and things are because the system just flows because it's been focused on them to work for them. And I will give you a few minutes for questions. I didn't want to get into the technologies, but I'm willing to take some questions about that because the technologies, you can get into a lots of different, you know, rabbit holes or direction that may or may not be relevant to everybody in the audience. But hopefully it gave you things that, hey, for our systems, again, these are the things we got to think about if you're not satisfied with where you're at today. So we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. If you have a question, just raise your hand and, and I'll get you a microphone and, and we can ask those. We've got about 10 minutes here to, to go through those. I did have one, one quick question to kind of start us off. When you're talking through the beginning stages of your scoreboard, what kind of measures or, or conversations are you having with your, your um, employees to help them understand those scoreboards? Yeah, yeah don't, don't have a blank sheet of paper and say, what are your ideas? 
um, you already have something. I mean, we had, again, you have the white, you have the whiteboard where you're writing your metrics down or if you're not using or you're putting it into Excel and you're projecting it on a system and calling that your, which nothing wrong. Again, start with what they know and what you have and then it will evolve. Uh, you know, listen to your employees and uh, it will evolve and also teach, you know, it's about finding the lead indicators you know, from your employees, if you do these and then getting those lead indicators kind of on the scoreboard. So yeah, give them, give them something that you already have to react to. Again, you use the example of a, a corn planter and, and the, uh, the use of outside companies to help navigate through precision farming and crops, right. I presume. Right. What, as you look at um, that in, in livestock, what does that look like? Yeah, it's a great question. So um, I see, again, I'm gonna give you an ERP vision of, of systems and what it looks like there. So it, an ERP, again, ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning. I have a couple visions for that. First of all, I say I can't do my planning if I can't tell you where I've been. So the first thing you focus on is record your events and your actions and your history. So that's, I'll call it the accounting, the inventory, et cetera, right? The events that have occurred. But the value is, is in the future of looking. Then it's like, how do you connect, and this is a part of your vision, how do you connect the IOTs, right? The, all these devices and bring them together. Because you will not, I mean, and it's, that's where the vision is, is for your business, your plan. And technologies are making that, I'm not sure, easier, different, right? I'll tell you, I'm not a, so, this platform, we're SQL database, we're hosted, I don't care where it's hosted, but we're SQL so that we can have access to our data and manage our data. Because I have found it very difficult to try to move data from one API cloud system into another cloud system and then keep it sustained. We have a hard time getting from our cloud system down to us because they change things and you're always doing that. But you need to understand your data flow. So if you have the devices out there, environmental, I mean, we are working, right? And a lot in here probably are. I mean, we wanna, we wanna track room and building environmental with all this other information we already have. How do we connect those? I wanna know in a nursery, the 24 hours before I put pigs in a nursery, that, you know, what was the temperature? Is the room warm, the slats are warm, et cetera, right? You know, kind of where, how did that room look over the last 24 hours that I know I can deliver pigs there? So how do I attract that there? Or my room temperatures and age of pigs. We know how many pigs and where they're at in age. So how do you connect devices? Um, everybody's saying they're making it easier. Uh, it's, it's not as easy as the vendors say. But it's a whole lot easier if you know your, your part of it is knowing your data and saying this is the data I, I need and it needs to end up here, right? The conversations usually have to be at the data level and then the technology level. Are there any other like engagement uh, issues or like things that you use aside from like the scoreboard, like how you use like that like little competition thing of like comparing the employees like mortality rates and such? Is there any other um, visual engagement tools that you use? Um, so we have a scoreboard for nurseries. I mean, so for each work cell areas or groups, right, we want a compelling scoreboard relative, relevant to them. Behind the scoreboard is further, you know, a way to dig deeper. If you know your information, so we can look at 
farrowing room, sow mortality by employee based on who farrowed. You know, kind of, so what's the stillborns, et cetera, and what's the wean performance based on the person that farrowed, right? If we want to, and, and they can drill that, or the breed, obviously the breeding. We have tried not to duplicate anything that's already in. I mean, if you're using Metafarms or one of those systems, right, they got a lot of great reports. We're not trying to duplicate and eliminate what they're already doing well. We're trying to do things where there are voids in those systems to make it easier for the front line. We're doing stuff on an app, right? So pig moves and mortalities are on the app and the inventory and it updates immediately. So anybody can look, and again, there's other apps that are out there. But if the frontline employee doesn't see the data update in a more real-time basis, it's hard for them to buy in, to have confidence in it, right? They feel like they're feeding the system, and yeah, tomorrow when you get the report, it'll show up. Tomorrow? Like, why not now? Should be now. We've got time for a couple more questions. I'm just curious to know, um, once you put um, these dashboards or whatever you wanna call them, to help your frontline employees um, improve their performance. Um, how has your production improved at these facilities and how has employee performance improved over this time? Because I'm assuming you're taking metrics of that as well. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, our best employees have worked at, I'll use the cell farm. They've worked at other cell farms. And they said they won't go back. I, we have a, this, you know, the, uh, again, they are empowered. You know, they feel they are doing the whole process. And again, we've, it's been growing also for them. But the, the, they see the data first. So it's not like the vet comes in or somebody comes in and says, hey, you know, do you realize? And there's those, I mean, that can happen because they didn't realize, right? But they know their breed performance. And they know their personal breed performance, not just this. Right, and so new people coming in are getting, if a new breeder, to train up to get to that conception rate or whatever, whoever they were replacing, and they probably want to beat them. We're experiencing 10% employee turnover at the cell farm because we're pulling them out and taking them to other places on the farm, and lower than that for leaving the operation. So it, to me, it's a job fulfillment. Do you have any experience with trying to share financial metrics with employees? And if so, good, bad, any experiences? Yeah, with it's a great question. Um, we just sat down this week, actually, and uh, you know, well, again, for the cell farm with the farrowing manager, breeding manager, barn you know, supervisor go through, compare, here's our financials. Um, we, we show operating costs with even our grow finish partners, so we don't, show the profit, the revenue. Um, though when we, uh, again, we have a, on the grow finish side, we give the, you know, the, the sort, again, every business is different. We don't have dedicated sorters. We, partners that are on this farm, you know, may sort their pigs. But again, a tight sort, everybody knows, is worth more than a wide variation, especially with certain packers, even more so. Right? So we send out the distribution of their each load, and they want it the day after they say, like when it shipped this morning, the next morning they want to know what was my load distribution. You know, what was, and we go by CV percent, right? Which is the percent. So everybody that sorts knows and loads pigs knows exactly what their CV is on every load before they sort the next load. And we pay, and they pay out bonus for hitting CV percents on sort. We've taken, we consistently hit below a 6% CV percent if you're tracking that. And I think the only reason, and we didn't, again, and we don't have dedicated sorters and are able to do that. 
if you have a dedicated sorter, it's, uh, it's easier. <laughs> so. Hmm? I work with Kent, so I'm going to point out a couple things. To your question, the, the two whiteboards are just a little piece of the pie. There's, there's a couple, we do use tons of reports in the barn for people to make decisions. So one of them would be like for our fairing manager, we have a report that shows every single fairing room, we can flip through it, exactly what's going on in every single crate. Where, so you might be making calling decisions. You don't have to go. I mean, you start with that report that has all the information on it. And so we've made their job in, in the barn substantially easier by doing it. But one of the things I was going to point out, another leading indicator on here would be the, uh, the, the fairing plan. So that's, that's the workload coming down the pipeline. So the staff's looking at that and saying, we got 48 sows due to fair tomorrow. We need two people attending sow fairings tomorrow. You know, and so providing them information that they can plan their day out the next day or next couple of days, they see it, it's in front of them. Okay, Saturday we have 13 sows due. And so I just wanted to point that out. There's more robust reports behind a lot of this that, that make their job easier, resulting in lower turnover and, and all those good things. Every day gestation barn shows up on the printer if they're doing preg checks or whatever their tasks are all that it's already printed out for them when they show up and for the farrowing room so um, yeah day one treats or you know processing it, it shows you know it prints out every morning these are the and exactly what crates are in and in which order to go processing for biosecurity where do you start where do you end on 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 processing and so again the person showing up just picks it up and goes we're still paper we use paper and color um, so we use colors also so we use color we have color printers within the sow farm so if it's a call animal it you know the numbers always flag the certain color and everybody knows you know wherever that identity on a report or anything it'll show up as a color I think we've got time for one quick question. If anybody has uh, one more quick question. You talked about using the app. Are you using a phone or what kind of mechanism to uh, get around some of the other biosecurity concerns? Yeah. Um, so our app is, it's a web app. And it's, um, it'll work, it'll size relative to the device they log into. It's obviously easier on an iPad versus a phone, depending on what you're doing. Uh, but again, and we've made the app such that we believe that once a person's trained kind of how to use the app, then from there on they will, they will never need to be trained again, even if they move to other areas or do other functions, because it's only requesting them for information that they were probably providing on paper before. Well, let's go ahead and thank our speaker, and we will keep moving. <laughs>